guys, what is up? So tonight I'm going to be attempting chicken fettuccine alfredo. I'm super excited. I've tried this recipe before and like miserably failed, but my new favorite cooking channel is just Joshua Weiserman. I like love him. Like, he's super huge and popular. Like check him out. I always link below the recipe I followed. He said he makes this faster than if you were to get takeout. The recipe looks super simple. Like it doesn't look that complicated. I feel like I've always made it so complicated in the past. So I'm going to attempt that again. Um, and this time add chicken because I tried to just fettuccine alfredo and failed. But now we're going to add some chicken into it and try and make it like a tasty, nutritious dish. So um, yeah, let's get started. So my water is boiling and I am going to start by putting a lot of salt in there. And then I'm going to add my fettuccine because that always seems to be the longest. I just get straight up barilla. We have a really fancy like uh, Italian deli, I guess you could say, but I don't know. And yeah, I have a long pot too, so I don't have to break this. But you know, we're gonna just we're gonna just put it in as such. And yeah, I'm gonna put all of it in. And because it's going into the sauce, like I'm not worried about it being done too soon. In fact, like I said, I always end up waiting for the pasta to finish. So we're gonna just throw that in there. And while that's going, I'm going to start. Well, this one might not work so well. Let's see. So I start the chicken over here. Does that one not work? All right. We might just have to go ahead and make the chicken over here. So I'm gonna put it on medium high and put some oil. The chicken's gonna cook really fast. I'm actually gonna put the oven to 350 because he like puts it in there to like finish cooking, I guess. So he kind of does the, I don't know. He doesn't show the chicken too much. So I don't know. He kind of just salts and peppers the chicken. So it seems simple. I'm gonna put this heat up on We're gonna let that heat and then we're gonna salt our chicken. Uh, yeah, I guess we can even like salt and pepper. We have the little pieces and we have a filet style. And yeah, that's really the only seasoning he puts in. So I think these will cook up super quick. And yeah, looks tasty, <laughs> not much to it. I, again, I think that's all he does. He doesn't really specify in the recipe, so simple. I'm just go ahead and put it on the skillet. So it has a little bits of chicken. I think this will like literally cook in minutes because it's small amounts, but yeah, this is a new thing we're adding to it. So we put the chicken in here to kind of keep warm and it's kind of like, you know, baking it a little more, but it's pretty much fully cooked. And then up here we have it on medium heat and we are going to add our heavy whipping cream and butter. So he says one and one fourth cup I measured y'all. So there's a one cup of whipping cream and this is on medium heat, and I'm going to get a fourth more cup in that, and I love heavy whipping cream. Mm, looks so good. And then we're going to add another fourth cup. So again, this is one of the easiest <laughs> fettuccine thing mixes I've seen, so I'm hoping this works. I don't think I can screw it up, but you never know. And then with the butter, this is cool. <laughs> the butter has, oh sorry, like that's so gross. I literally burnt myself cooking this past week, so that's why I haven't been doing ASMR videos this week. Anyways. Half a cup right here, that's how much you need. So, I don't know, I just saw this and got it and it's kinda cool. So we're gonna throw this in and it's going to, we're gonna stir it all till it melts together. So it's basically like butter noodles with some extra, some extra cream, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Just to constantly stir until all butter is melted. And it's melting pretty quickly. I'm hoping the consistency turns out good, <laughs> but I think the cheese will make it like a little extra extra. So we're just stirring it on medium heat. I guess I could like chopped it up, but you know. The nuts has to bring up to medium high and bring it to like a simmer for three to four minutes, stirring occasionally. So I think we want a little, a little bubbly action and stirring it, I guess. So I don't know, so it doesn't burn. I'm not really sure. That's just what the instructions say. It's simmering. And we're just stirring. Let it simmer for like another minute, minute or so. Check the pasta over here. Because once the pasta's done, we can just move it on over because we're going to put it into the 
pasta sauce. And that is definitely coming to a simmer, which I don't think I did last time. So I think this is, this is good. Kind of getting it more saucy. Which I like, because again, I've never mastered fettuccine, so we'll see. Now we're going to kind of like scoot everything over, because we're going to turn off the heat here. And my pasta I took off as well. So we're scooting everything kind of over here, because we don't need any more heat. And now we are going to add in all of the other ingredients, which is the Parmesan. He also used Pecacino. He didn't say it in the recipe, so we didn't get it. But we're going to just go ahead and use this Parmesan. We have two cups of it. I'm going to save a little for the topping at the end. So, I guess it's not much, but, you know, we want to make it cheesy. And then we're going to also add the garlic. I can also chop some more. I'm going to go ahead and mix this in. And just have it really thick. It also said you can, like, save some pasta water if you want to like emulsify it more so we might do that just kind of mixing in the cheese it looks like a pretty good consistency I don't know I'm so bad with these kind of things it looks better than my previous ones again he like he didn't really specify like he did go so fast he's like it's the fastest recipe ever, but also like kind of lost me along the way. So, all right, now I can add in some garlic. And yeah, this is like four minced garlics. So we're gonna just dump all that in. Okay. And I don't think I added garlic last time to the fettuccine, so. Garlic's always like my favorite thing to put in there. And yeah, salt pepper. So that's kind of just like butter noodles basically. With like an extra step. And yeah, cut the chicken up and put it on top. Looks pretty good. it all up in there. And I think I'm going to just take the noodles straight from um, the water. So I might have a little water in it. So I don't think I need to like save any pasta water. Although if I need to, I have plenty of that. And while I do that, I'm going to take out the chicken so I can cut that up over here. And it won't take long. Keep it nice and warm in there. Oh, that chicken looks good. So I cooked the majority of that on top. And we're going to slice that up. And now we are going to add in that pasta. And I'm going to do so with tongs and see how that goes. I think it's mixed pretty well. Definitely not as liquidy as before. So, let's see here. Take some of this pasta. Okay. And we are going to put it in sauce. And these blue packets of pasta seriously make so much pasta. It's so crazy. Anytime we do angel hair, which angel hair would have been really good with this too, but. I went with the classic fettuccine noodles since that's what we're making and I haven't made this at home in a while. I had this at a restaurant not too long ago and it was so good. So we'll see if this is better than a restaurant. This is definitely the most easy to follow recipe <laughs> um, of all the fettuccine. So that's why we went with this. So let's see. Let's mix it in. Mmm, that actually looks so freaking good. Yeah, it finally looks like fettuccine. Oh my gosh, I think this is the first time I've made fettuccine that looks like fettuccine. <laughs> and there's quite a bit of sauce in there, so I'm gonna keep going with the 
noodles. Sometimes I don't want to like overwhelm it with like too much noodles, but yeah. And because I'm dripping like water and I think it's like making this, this, the sauce like, as they say, emulsify. <laughs> yeah, he also put thyme in his. We didn't have any fresh thyme, so I'm also like, I don't know, kind of distracted, so. <clears throat> Yum. And yeah, he puts at the end a little more cheese and salt and pepper at the top, which we would totally will do. Mmm, that's like looking so, so delicious. Okay, everything shut off. Mmm, yes. We are getting into it. I guess not. I want to like close up on that. It's so good. Yes. Yummy yum. All right. So I'm going to plate this, put the chicken on top, and we'll get the hubby to do a little taste test. I think this might be, I think this might be it. Hopefully. We'll see. I didn't taste it, but you know. All right. So this is a fettuccine take two. Last time I made fettuccine, it went horribly wrong. I don't know why. Like, I feel like if the sauce wasn't. This right? amazing. Yeah, I feel like the garlic yeah. helped with this stuff, so. <laughs> Dig in. And the chicken's interesting because we never cook chicken like that, and I mean, that's how we cooked it, so I guess to keep it simple. I was yeah, thinking for something gets, like encrusted, huh? I guess the flavor from the Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo, one of my favorite dishes. Why well, do you don't get chicken? Usually I just get that Alfredo, but that, you know, add a little that's protein. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you good? Mm -hmm. Wow. This is officially better than the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Your catch break. It really is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mmm. I'm so happy I got this one right because remember last time, I don't know, so people like Babish makes it so complicated where he's like <laughs> with the thing like trying to simmer it down. This was like pretty straightforward. And I got the right measurements, which I guess helps a lot, but yeah, this is really good. Mm -hmm. The chicken's good. And the Parmesan and garlic, that's really the main flavor. Mm -hmm. And we use more of it this time. Well, that's the secret then. Wow. So good. I love it with the extra cheese on it. It tastes like a really rich butter noodles. Oh. I mean, much more than just that. <laughs> I love the sauce. I love the pepper. You like the chicken? Mm-hmm. Do you? Yeah. Well, we've been getting our chicken at Mr. Kosher, so. <laughs> the kosher chicken is the way to go. Mm-mm-mm. I've been napping so much and I feel wide awake. <laughs> it's like the end of our day, but. I'm like, oh, what are we gonna do tonight? Go to the movies. <laughs> Zero clubbing. I'm taking my prenatal for anyone wondering. Crafty. You wanna go clubbing? Did we ever go to a club together? It's quarantine. Mm. We were lucky if we could go to a restaurant. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we party at home. <laughs> that is true. We didn't have the most fun. I'm telling you, you're the one. <laughs> we just have fun being at home. Mm. Woo, this is so good. It's like the first real meal of the day. This week has been off for me. I think because we've had other workers in the house doing like other rooms and stuff like that. I just feel like I haven't been able to like. We haven't been able to be in our bedroom. That's like my main station. Upstairs, it just feels like a sleeping room. So I've been just sleeping so much up there. I love it, but I just feel like I want to sleep and not do anything else. So next week, I'm going to get my button gear, go through packages, clean up the table, get my ASMR around. Because really, August is the last month to, for me, really, to like go, go, go. <laughs> and then September, it's kind of like a waiting game. Like, when's it going to happen? And time flies. 
Oh my god. It's so fast. That already is going so fast. I'm like, oh my god. Eight weeks left and like <clears throat> this seems like we just got pregnant. <laughs> I guess it's like when I thought, when you got pregnant, I thought like doctor's visits and stuff just took up so much more of your time. I mean, they're really like five minutes. Knock on wood? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We've been, we've been lucky. Blessed with. Yeah, I mean, you're the pregnancy superhero. It's been so much fun. I think this week it was like setting in like, oh my god, I'm not going to be pregnant like in September <laughs> or October. I mean, I'm so excited. Obviously, I'm so excited because then we have the baby, but I just love feeling her every day. Like, that feels like my purpose when I'm in bed. I'm like, mm, there's a baby in there. <laughs> there's a life in there. But I guess it'll be even more purpose when she comes because then there's a life. It'll be the same. It'll be, the, it'll be the baby here. I Sit know. Oh, I'm so excited. Taking a nap with the baby. That's true. I know. I can't wait for our recliner to come in. Got a comfy one for in there. I'll be in there all the time anyway because I love recliners. Mm hmm. I'm impressed with how this came out. <laughs> Perfect. It's not too soupy, not too thick. What should we cook next? Actually, you had a good one. You had a good one from your mom. Well, we have chicken a few. Mm-hmm. So we definitely have to learn to make a good chicken soup. And we make it also with noodles, like you like it too. Okay. They're the little ones. Like little noodles that go into a soup. Like what would they be called? I don't know. Like would you get them at just a regular market or? Mm-hmm. the same like when we go to the Jewish deli. That's what I'm saying. I don't even know what those noodles are called though. Well, I know what they look like. But those, mm -hmm. those are the noodles. They're like little small. Like what section? Would they be in the pasta section? Yeah. I'm just saying real look. Yeah, I know. They're, I've seen them. I do like chicken noodle soup. We made lots of ball soup with it. So chicken soup is like healthy. So if anyone ever is a cold or sick or something, you can quickly make it. That's what it. I had during COVID. Mm-hmm, mm hmm mm. Wow. I love pasta so much. So that's one, and then there's the, like, breakfast. So there's, like, burekas. Mm. There's, like, pastries that have either potato or cheese inside of them. And what else do you make with it? And with that, she makes, like, this kind of a potato salad. So it's like potato, hard boiled egg, and some other vegetables, and then put some mayo and you mix it. Yum. And it's, it's warm, it's served warm. So we have that, the pastries. Then you can either have some cheese, different cheese, yogurt, and stuff like that, or... You said you have it like Saturday morning breakfast? Mm -hmm. It's so good. I'm excited for that. Also... Moses got these dishes at World Market. They're like the perfect pasta dish. Anything with sauce, like rice. Because we have plates and we have bowls, but we didn't have the bowl plate. <laughs> I <laughs> love this. Between the two. It's so funny. The day you got this was the day I ordered the Ray Dunn ones online that say like pasta in it too. And it's just like this, except they're white. But I love the pink ones. I think they're so cute. Mm -hmm. There's a little something extra. Dang, this was so good. So easy today. I feel like these are the recipes people need. Mm-hmm. And he does a... The guy who makes these does a weird thing. Where he like intercuts someone going to get takeout while he's cooking. So it's kind of hard to follow the recipe. Because he'll like start cooking. And then it's the guy like going to the restaurant to get the takeout. I guess that's his style. I guess that's what makes him unique. Because then at the end, he has like his... um. Like people that help them film and stuff, taste tests, like restaurant versus 
and his is always oh, better. Oh, so the takeout is the one he's ordering. So he's ordering and making. Yeah, so he'll like get, send someone out to get chicken fettuccine alfredo, and he'll basically time it and be like, "This is faster." So he'll get done with his before his friend comes back with the fettuccine, and then once they do, they do like a taste test to see which one is better. We could do that. <laughs> wow, I mean, it's always gonna be better than the restaurant because the restaurant also wants to take out like all of the sauce kind of clumps. I don't know. It's just no, always better can. to cook I mean, at home. Sauce like this, you cannot. Yeah. So this is actually better than even the restaurant we go to where I get my fettuccine. So I'm glad I was able to make this because it's really, really yummy. And again, there's something about it. They make it too rich. Yeah. Like, oh. Something it's so much butter and sauce. It's like heavy and rich, and this is like yeah, not as much. It's so clear. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good. I want pasta. <laughs> but we didn't have much today, so we just have like avocado toast. Oh yeah, like salmon. Um, smoked salmon. Mm -hmm. It's so good, I just love it. It's really really? Where did you get that one? When we went to Costco to get the shrimp for the like, mm. shrimp pasta, mm -hmm. I saw that and it looked good. I need to find a so, snack like that for me. <laughs> what? I had it with your Hawaiian... Mmm! I, I never had that bread before. Really? It's so good. Oh my god. They're like... Sweet and I don't know, it's like so good. No, that's like the staples. He's talking about the King's Hawaiian rolls. Those are like staples at like Thanksgiving. <laughs> They're so good. Because after you make a turkey, people would eat sandwiches for a couple days and they'd always make them in those little buns. It's funny. They're so good, right? Mm -hmm. I eat those when I'm like nauseous too. I wish you get some fresh ones. I'm surprised they were still good. They're fresh. Oh. Mm hmm. Do you like a little sandwich? Mm. I need to think of like a good lunch. Let me know if there's recipes even. Like a good like lunch snack. Like what's a good like little lunch that's like super easy to make? I make peanut butter sandwiches for myself, but that's something here. I guess these ideas, but that's like cheese. But right now you need to eat cheese. That's true. Like calcium and stuff. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, my bones have been like cracking. <laughs> like my knee bone. Like, I feel like I have carpal tunnel on my hand, which is, like, so weird. It hurts so bad. I can't squeeze a tush. I'm like, ow, it just hurts. <laughs> um, it's because my buns are made of steel. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that, I mean, like, cheese quesadilla is so easy. Yeah. And tasty. But what else is there that's like that? Oh, hard-boiled eggs. I forget about those. God, I should eat those more often. So I got wheat bread now with, like, whole grains in it and, like, nutrition stuff. I need to get yogurt. Mm -hmm. I guess I should have looked around before I went out. But, mm, I really get so hungry. The trick is to not get too hungry before you get too hungry. Because today I've been like, <laughs> it's because we've been sleeping all the way up. It's like technically like, what is it? Like our fourth floor or fifth floor or something. Let's see, we have the one, two, three. Four. Yeah, it's like the fourth floor. And our kitchen's technically on like the second floor. And it doesn't seem that bad, but it really is. And those stairs going up, the last set of stairs is like so steep because it's like its own level. So it's just a lot to come all the way back down. All the way up. So especially in the morning when you first wake up, you're just like, oh, I just want to <laughs> not go anywhere. <laughs> it's good exercise though. I've been going up and down, getting my water. I forget my computer up there. But I love sleeping up there. I love. It's very cozy. I just miss my workspace. Like. My bed is like my hub where I like edit and I feel like I get stuff done. And this video is just fine. Our bedroom's gonna look so cool. It's gonna be so bright. It's gonna look really nice, especially because I filmed up there and stuff. It already looks good. He looks so handsome today. His hair's growing out. It's kind of like Elvis vibes and thickness. <laughs> I like it. And the scruffy beard. I forgot to turn it before we. I like it. I don't mind it actually. <laughs> Shall we? Very. Thickums. I was getting too. Whew. I get a haircut just here, like the sides. Yeah, it goes over your ears. Oh, that I love Yeah, the garlic is good. Good job on the extra yeah. garlic. No, you can have them. They're the butts of the chicken. Chicken look good. That Mr. Kosher really does come through. It's crazy. 
the difference in chicken. Because, mm-hmm. like, Ralph's is good, but... And it's kind of far than Mr. Kosher. It's kind of... But when you can remember... When we know we have a recipe. Mm-hmm. I tell him we should vlog there. Mr. Kosher. You need to come there. Yeah. Walk together. And then across the street is falafel on wheels. I haven't been there in so long. That is good. I watched our falafel video the other day and I was like, oh, that was actually like so good. I was fun to make those. The one we made or the one we went to falafel with? The one we made. Oh. Because <laughs> I went to go look at it and I was like, oh, that was actually like so good, I thought. Because I saw him last week and he said that there's, <laughs> he was like, there's little things, like little secrets about how to make falafel. Oh, really? So was he you, offering? Maybe he'll give you some... <laughs> Can I go on the falafel on wheels truck and learn? <laughs> oh, sure. They have really good fries, too. I love their fries there. And their... What's the one? Masab? What's that? What is the rose? Malabi. Malabi. Yeah. It has rose water on it. Mm. Mm-hmm. He was super nice. He was like, if you have an event or something, I'll come up, do the food on the spot. Um, the baby's christening. We have the baptism. <laughs> fall fall on wheels for everyone. And today for the baptism we have <laughs> I like it. That's a vibe. Very funny. Oh man, what a day. Baby's been moving. She moves so much now. It's crazy. Well, there's less space, so she's more... Yeah, she's getting big. I'm so curious to know how big she is. Because they know her weight, right? They just don't know her length. Or they just guess. Because last time they told us it was like she was like four pounds. Right. I guess they just kind of guess. Sometimes, I mean, they measure... Do you see them measure certain things? Like they'll measure the her skull. If they measure the size of it. They measure length of bones. You see them like... Yeah. We can ask yeah, be interesting. I feel like she is growing, growing, growing. Yeah, I was a little bit over eight pounds. That's crazy. I was ten pounds two ounces. So, so she's probably gonna be between eight and ten. That's good. That's good, healthy weight. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. I'm glad she's doing good every time we see her. Like they always say she's healthy. She's kicking, strong heartbeat, good position. Her head, I feel like, is already down there all the time. So I feel like she's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her head is only. Always down on the legs. When I visualize labor and delivery, I literally visualize it being like so easy. And I know everyone's gonna come for me in the comments, like, oh, okay, but let me just have this piece with my meditate. I literally just feel like she comes out. <laughs> like for me, I feel like it's gonna breathe and come out. I'm gonna meditate during my labor. That's my whole my goal. Just to you breathe. Will. It's really helped me so much. So I believe in the power of it. Yeah, especially if you feel pain or something, so you can kind of get out. Yeah, get out of your body. Mm-hmm. I'm so and, then, and also, I mean, like, the labor itself is, what, 24 to 48 hours. So it's like, there's no <laughs> point stressing for nine months. Yeah, no. That's short of my I time. haven't been, surprisingly. Yeah. So it's better to just be, like, yeah. Like, here it comes. Manifesting. Yeah. Easy. Smooth. Everyone says, like, the first one's the hardest. Like, when I talk to my siblings or something like that, that have babies, um, they're like, the first one was the hardest, and they said, by the fourth baby, the baby just slid out. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, and I saw that with the LeBrants, too. Like, she, her last delivery was, like, so easy for her. I was like, wow. Was that the one where she, they told her, like, don't push? Yeah, she goes, I'm not. <laughs> and she's just like, and then it was out. <laughs> she's like, that was so easy. I was like, okay. I mean, it was her fourth baby, so I guess the first one probably is the, your body's getting used to it, but we'll see. Of course. Everything rearranges in there. I mean, what if we have four? We might have four. We keep thinking three, but I feel like the third is going to be like a set of twins. I heard, I don't know if this is true, that like people in their 30s are more likely to have twins, even if it's not genetically in your system. Because you're, did I tell you this? Because your body's like preparing for menopause, basically. So like it's shooting out like double the eggs. Really? That's what someone said. I had seen that on like a TikTok or something that like, and it makes sense because a lot of my friends in their 30s had twins that weren't, um, and it wasn't IVF or anything, so, it's like, oh wow, a lot of people have twins, so. That's interesting. Because it's not in my family, do you have any twins, but you never know. Not really. It could be total bullshit, but, <laughs> I thought that was interesting, they're like, oh, because it's like your body just started releasing more eggs. It's, bit, it's funny how 
since IVF came around, that's like in my mind, it's always twins IVF, like in my mind. But yeah, in, in high school, in elementary school, there were a few set of twins that were just naturally. A lot of people, I know a lot of people that have them just naturally, actually. So I think we'll see. Or we might just have four because we just won't be able to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as you want to. As long as you want to. No, I mean, if you enjoy carrying the baby. Oh, right. Being pregnant. I love being pregnant, so again, we'll see how the labor and delivery goes, but I'm excited. We'll see. I think once you have two, you know how you feel about that. That's true, because people seem to either have two and stop, but then a lot of people don't have four, so it's kind of like, I guess, to me, I love having three. I love having an older sibling and a younger sibling, so I mean, that's kind of like the perfect, but then sometimes I think about like, hmm, four kind of sounds fun. <laughs> and sometimes it's, there's more distance, more time between them, so. Well, we don't have too much time. No, no. People you know have babies at 40. And then we done at 40. <laughs> Once 40 comes, I'll stop. But that's a long ways. I still have, yeah, something like six, six years. Six kids. Maybe four kids in six years. Is that possible? Yeah. People do that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm just really excited for our baby number one. It's so much fun. I can't wait. All right, guys. That is enough chit chat. I kind of look tan. My face is, I haven't put makeup on all week. I just feel very out of not myself this week, but. It's a good break. It's a good break. Sleep. Relax. <laughs> it was a good break. But I do get antsy when I get it. I love them. So the cooking videos, it's like, well, we have to eat. Next week, though, I do have a recipe I want to follow that's like fried mac and cheese balls, and they look so good the way he makes it. Like, the cheese he puts in his mac and cheese looks really good. It's super simple. Then he freezes it, cuts it into squares, makes them into balls, and then fries them. Because I was going to ask, how do you keep them? Yeah, he, like, freezes it for two hours. Carrot. Basically, like, a six-hour cooking day because he does something for two hours, freezes it for two hours, whatever. So, and then he puts, and then he kind of rolls it like we do our chicken and panko, and then put it in the thing. So, I don't know. It looks really, really good. Because I love fried mac and cheese from Cheesecake Factory, but not have, like, an aversion to Cheesecake Factory. And I know they'll be better than the Cheesecake Factory because their cheese is kind of weird. His cheese, he had, like, three cheeses in it. And it looks so good. So, I'm going to attempt that. I don't know if it's really dinner, but. Maybe the falafel was in preparation for this one. Right. It kind of, because he does freeze it. It makes sense. So, Babe, you're so cute. You're the cutest. You've been so hard working and so sweet. He's the best person I get. For you? And she goat. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next video. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is, how, this is how, yeah, it's our Shabbat dinner. Alright, bye guys.